Black tie, black tie, black tie. Today it's all about black tie. We're going to talk about specifically dinner suits and dinner jackets. Welcome to Ask Oki. I am your host, Prof, also known as the King of Drape. Let's get right into it. We're going to start from the top. We'll talk about the features of a dinner jacket. We'll talk about full dinner suits and how they differ from a dinner jacket. We'll look at the materials and fabrics that are used in constructing or making them. We'll look at things like lapels and button configuration. We'll also delve into waistcoats and how they are worn with dinner suits. And finally, what to avoid when wearing your black tie or dinner suit. Let's get into it from the top. Now, let's talk about the features of a, of a dinner jacket. The lapel. The lapel is one of the most outstanding things or striking things about a dinner garment. Uh, a, a dinner garment, it's meant to be exuberant. Uh, it's not meant to be subtle. Uh, this is your one occasion or one opportunity to really show off your best tailoring. And so it needs to be not necessarily flamboyant, but it needs to be bold, such as that which I'm wearing. I'm wearing a single-breasted, peak lapel in a jacket, and as you can tell, tell uh, the lapels are quite, quite expressive. So again, the lapel. Uh, now, when we talk about lapel, what types of lapels are there? You have peak lapels, and then you have short lapel. A short lapel sort of curves around like that in sort of in a circular motion, and a peak lapel. Um, never, ever, ever wear a notch lapel uh, on a dinner jacket. That is just absolute sartorial heresy. Don't do it. So lapels, peak lapel, short lapel. Now let's go to the button configuration. For single-breasted uh, jackets or dinner jackets or dinner suits, uh, it comes with just a single button closure. Single button closure, not two buttons, not three buttons, just a single button. Now, one other alternative is to use a link, such as I do have on. It's just more elegant to my eye, or sort of in my opinion, it's just more elegant. Uh, nothing wrong with having a single button, but to my eye, a link is just very, so much more elegant and dressy. Now, for your double-breasted dinner jacket, uh, typically they come with four buttons. So one, two on top, and two at the bottom. Well, you might have seen them done with six buttons. I highly discourage that. I do not recommend those for a dinner jacket uh, or dinner suit. If it's double-breasted, it has to have four buttons, two at the top, two at the bottom. Let's talk about the pockets. The pockets, meaning the waist pocket, they should be only, only based on pockets. And what do I mean by based on pockets? Based on pockets, are, some call them slit pockets. It's just a straight pocket like that and like that. Otherwise, in other words, without flaps. Certainly no patch pockets. And I'm sure most of you know well enough not to wear patch pockets on your dinner suit or jackets, but no flaps. Flaps are for your lounge suits. For dinner suits or dinner jackets, they should be simple in the pocket. They should just basically be a slit or base on pocket. Now let's talk about lapel decoration. The lapel I have on is decorated in gross grain. I hope I'm pronouncing it right, but it's, it's sort of, it's a matte uh, fabric that is used. Uh, it's sort of, it's, it's, uh, it's, it's, uh, it's not very shiny. The other option, of course, is to use satin, but I find satin to be a bit too shiny. I think gross grain is just uh, more elegant in my view, just more matte. Now, for dinner jackets, there are those who might sort of choose to have a self cloth, meaning sort of use the same fabric uh, on the jacket itself for the lapel. For instance, your summer dinner jackets, say in you know in cream, um, some have satin uh, on the uh, satin decoration on the lapel. I just think it looks too showy. Uh, so with your say your cream summer dinner jackets, I prefer them done in, in self, the lapels done in the self fabric. Uh, however, for everything else, uh, your tuxedo, of course, done in satin or gross grain for your uh, typical dinner jackets, uh, you could have them done in, in the same fabric or you could have them done 
also in satin or gross grain. Now let's talk about embroidery. Again, this is a very, it's a signature garment. So it is your one opportunity to really show off your tailoring. And so this is where you can really explore your imagination. And there are those who really take license and really create a work of art uh, in, on their dinner jackets. I am an inherent of simplicity. So I like to keep things fairly simple, not dull, but simple. So as far as embroidery goes, Dinner jackets, you could have them braided at the edge of the lapel, just taped at the edges, something very, very subtle, but distinct. Um, they could be done in contrast color and a color that contrasts with the lapel itself or the material or the fabric of the, of the jacket itself. Uh, also, the pockets, the jetted pockets or the basin pockets, uh, they can be decorated with the same fabric or the gross grain or silk. Uh, that is used uh, on the lapel here, there. Similar with the uh, breast pocket, but here we've done, uh, the breast pocket is pretty plain and we've used the same gross grain that we use here, we've used to pipe the basin pockets. Uh, so that's about it. Now the cuffs as well, uh, for dinner jackets, I don't recommend this on tuxedos, but for dinner jackets, uh, you can get a little bit more exuberant and have them actually piped on the cuff. Uh, so there are those who have, who have frogging, actually, they use sort of the same uh, fabric they use for the frog, frogging uh, uh, enclosure to braid the, the cuffs of the coat. Again, this is getting very elaborate and I'm one for simplicity and I would probably recommend staying away from that. Now let's talk about vents. This is a very, very controversial subject. Now, classic dinner jackets come without vents. In other words, they have no vents at the back. Uh, however, depending on your morphology, uh, I particularly happen to be blessed with quite a generous seat. And we all know if you're familiar with tailoring, you would understand that double vents help your jacket drape better when you have a bit of a pronounced seat. So uh, the jury is out really on whether double vents are appropriate. Well, they're not entirely inappropriate. Uh, a, a no vent is the classic way to do it. However, if you want your, if you're say built a certain way and you're worried about your jacket not draping properly in the back, then certainly it's fair, it's fine to go with double vents as I have. Uh, with my coat here, you can see it's sort of double vented uh, to account for my, uh, let's say, general seat. Uh, single vent or single middle vent, no, don't do it. It's heresy. Uh, it's completely verboten. You shouldn't do, uh, shouldn't even attempt a single vent or single center vent on uh, a dinner jacket because a single center vent is uh, essentially is an equestrian feature equestrian feature it's a sport feature and certainly your dinner jacket or your dinner suit is a formal or semi-formal garment and should not feature any sporting features now let's talk about the trousers they, they ought to be high-waisted certainly as i have on they ought to be very high-waisted because they are one either with a vest or a cummerbund so they need to be high enough to cover or sort of to meet the vest or the cummerbund so one, they ought to be high-waisted. They could be pleated or not. Uh, they need to be plain hem. The bottom needs to be plain hem. In other words, no cuffs. Uh, all formal trousers come without cuffs. No back pockets. The back pockets or the back should be completely plain. You shouldn't have a back pocket. And you should have braiding on the side, as I have. And the braiding has to be done in the exact same fabric as the material or the fabric on the lapel just for congruence. Now let's talk about features. A full dinner jacket features. A full, full dinner jacket is essentially is a dinner jacket with a pair of matching trousers. So if you think about it, it's just sort of with a dinner jacket, you could wear a dark dinner jacket, black in midnight with, uh, with, uh, with a dark pair of trousers, or you could wear a cream dinner jacket with a black pair of trousers, uh, formal trousers. A full dinner suit means you have a jacket and the trouser in exactly the same fabric. It can be worn with or without a waistcoat, as I have on. I have mine on with a waistcoat, a double-breasted waistcoat, or it can be worn with a single-breasted waistcoat. Now, 
If you don't like wearing waistcoats, of course, you could wear a cummerbund, which is just as appropriate. The main idea is that for a formal garment such as this or semi-formal garment such as this, you need to cover your waist. Your waist needs to, your waistband needs to be completely covered. It cannot be exposed. So either you use a waistcoat or a cummerbund. You also have the option of not having a button on your, on your dinner suit jacket. For instance, I talked about it earlier. You could use a link such as I have here rather than a button. And what a link does is that it just links the two panels of the coat together. I just think it looks so much more elegant than a, than a regular button. But again, it's an option. You're not going to be arrested by the uh, formal police for not wearing uh, for not for wearing regular buttons. Now let's look at fabric. This is really where it gets very important. There are two fabrics primarily that are used for dinner suits, not jackets, suits. Barathea, such as I have on. This is a barathea. This is a midnight barathea. I believe this was supplied to us by Fox Brothers. This is a midnight barathea. Barathea is the most common material used for dinner jackets or dinner suits. And they come in various weights. They come in heavier weights. They come in lighter weights. Now, mohair is also a fabric that is commonly used for dinner suits or dinner jackets. Mohair tends to be lighter and breathes better than barathea. It's sort of more openly woven. And so if you find yourself in a tropical climate or if you live in a more humid climate, mohair might be a, a more suitable alternative to, to barathea. And usually the mohair, of course, is blended with, with wool about 50-50 or thereabout. Now, let's talk about fabrics for a dinner jacket. Again, barathea is a staple. Mohair wool is a staple, as we, as we, had, as we identified earlier with dinner suits. Now, specifically for dinner jackets, uh, gabardine can be used for summer jackets especially. Uh, cream summer jackets, when it's warm, uh, gabardine, lighter gabardine is a very suitable fabric to use for, let's say, your ivory, uh, short lapel uh, dinner jacket a la uh, uh, Casablanca, uh, for those of you who are movie buffs. Velvet cotton, of course, is very common, very commonly seen for dinner jackets. Uh, the typical colors being navy, uh, burgundy, bottle green. Uh, some might even cos consider mustard standard, I don't, uh, or black. Uh, and there are any number of velvet colors you could actually explode, you could explore your imagination. Uh, dinner jackets are meant to be colorful. So there are any number of colors there. But as far as, uh, as, far as the standard or classic colors, uh, those colors that I mentioned earlier, would uh, get you uh, sufficient mi mileage. One more fabric used for dinner jackets, which is more flamboyant, but equally suitable, is silk jacquard. Uh, it tends to be sort of more shiny, and again, much more flamboyant. So if you're looking, if you're going to a party or a dinner party, not particularly a conservative party, but just sort of a real party, and you want to really uh, push the boat out, then silk jacquard might be uh, suitable fabric to use for your dinner jackets. Now let's talk about the lapels. Start with a single breasted. Single breasted uh, dinner jackets or dinner suits come with a peak lapel or a short lapel, as I mentioned earlier in the introduction. Uh, a peak lapel such as a have on or a short lapel, never a notch lapel. Those are the only two options. Double breasted also come either with peak lapel, which is the only thing a double breasted garment should come in, or a short lapel as well. As far as the button configuration, it could be it usually four buttons, and it could be made as a four by one or a four by two. Four by one meaning sort of four buttons buttoning at the waist, or four, four by one uh, meaning four buttons buttoning at the lower row, or four by two meaning four buttons buttoning at the top row. Waistcoats. This is an opportunity to really lift up the outfit, if I could use that word. Uh, of course, cummerbunds are completely appropriate, but in my view, uh, a waistcoat is a, a dinner suit is an, a waistcoat is a great opportunity to really sort of lift up the elegance of the dinner ensemble to another level. And so again, waistcoats could either be single or double-breasted. I have on a double-breasted waistcoat today here. 
I also have an equivalent single-breasted, uh, but I like to wear the double-breasted jacket uh, or waistcoat when I have on a double, uh, single-breasted um, dinner jacket or suit. Uh, of course, you could do single-breasted as well. They must have lapels, absolutely. They have to have lapels, unlike your suit jacket or suit uh, waistcoats, which can be worn without lapels. For formal waistcoats or vests, they have to have, they have to come with lapels. They have to be decorated or sort of decorated. One more feature of waistcoats or dinner waistcoats is that they have to be cut low, lower than your typical waistcoat. So for your regular suit waistcoat, usually buttons up high. I like them quite high, just uh, open enough to show your tie. But with your dinner waistcoat, you want it cut quite low and in a circular form. And why? The point is you want to show off the Marcella front, or if you're wearing a bib front, or any other kind of floral, any other kind of decorative fabric on your shirt. Uh, you don't want to hide that behind the waistcoat. So I'm wearing a dinner shirt, a formal shirt, with a Marcella front or a Marcella bib. And what a low waistcoat does is that it exposes it. Not only that, you also wear studs with your dinner suit, of course. Never buttons. You wear a proper dinner shirt with studs. And these studs are essentially jewelry. And you don't want to cover them with the waistcoat. So the waistcoat is cut low in front to expose the Marcella front or the bib of the shirt and the uh, jewelry, as it were, or also known as your, uh, your dinner studs. Finally, what to avoid in a dinner suit or jacket? I'd mentioned a number of them earlier, but I'll go again, sort of read through the checklist here. One, for your jacket, no notch, notch lapel, please. Never under any circumstances uh, accept a dinner jacket, buy or accept, not even as a gift, uh, a dinner jacket with a, a notch lapel. Center vents, as I mentioned earlier, are a sporting feature on a jacket and have no place in a, in a formal garment. Uh, short jacket, certainly not. Um, if you're a fond of shorter jackets for your sports jackets or even your suit, a dinner jacket is not the place to wear a short jacket. Uh, the jacket needs to be sufficiently long. It's a formal garment. It should look dressy. It should look regal. It should look elegant. So again, the jacket should be cut fairly long. Trouser cuffs, we also mentioned. No trouser cuffs. Trouser cuffs belong on lounge suits or your odd trousers. On your formal trousers, they come with a plain hem. In other words, no cuffs. Flap pockets or patch pockets, we also mentioned earlier. Dinner jackets and dinner suits come only with base on pockets, such as I have on. No flap pockets, no patch pockets. Trousers, again, no back pockets. Now, there are those who might push back on this, and I'll give them some license there uh, to push back. But personally, I think a dinner outfit should be clean and elegant. And so uh, mine are always done you know, absent of back pockets, and I suggest or recommend that as well. Ties, always with a bow tie, of course. I think that's sort of uh, needless saying, or it's trite. Uh, I shouldn't have to say that for anyone who knows anything about dinner outfits. You know that they are one with a bow tie, never with a long tie or never with a regular tie. Now, the final thing is your shirt cuffs. You never wear your dinner suit with a barrel cuff. A barrel cuff means sort of a regular shirt cuff with buttons. They are one either with French cuffs or double cuffs with a cuffling, such as I have on. Again, a piece of jewelry that allows you to elevate your outfit or sort of to express yourself uh, in terms of uh, jewelry or in, a, in the form of jewelry. Never barrel cuffs. So you could either wear a French cuff, double cuff, or a single link cuff, such as I have on. I think this looks far more elegant. It looks far more elegant. This is just a dinner shirt. You wear it for nothing else. This is the only place where you wear a single link cuff. So that's about it. I think that was fairly comprehensive and not exhaustive, but we wanted to just capture the, uh, some high-level features 
of uh, black tie ensemble, uh, what things to look out for and what things to avoid. And so with that, I will bring, uh, we will bring this session to a close, but not before I remind you to please subscribe to our YouTube channel, like and comment on our videos on YouTube. If you haven't subscribed, please subscribe. Also, do not forget to follow us on Instagram, where we post reels and posts every day and where we have a very, very active community engaging in the story section on all manners of soterial issues. Uh, the IG handle is Askoki IG. That's A-S-K-O-K-E-Y-I-G. Please follow us on Instagram. Uh, certainly, also, we have a Discord community where we have a small community, a growing community of like-minded individuals uh, who exchange ideas amongst uh, one another on all things Satoria and beyond. Last and certainly not the least, do not forget to check out our website overall and our web shop specifically, where we have all our outfits or all our garments, all our products, shirts, trousers, suits, jackets, and, and all the other things that are on there. So please do yourself a favor. Uh, go to our website. It's www.askoki.com. Uh, go to shop. Go to the blog section. All our videos, all our YouTube videos are repeated on our website. So there's quite a lot to, uh, to chew on while you're there visiting or looking at the products. Uh, there's, there's so much more, so much more content and material on the website. So with that, I say thank you uh, for keeping me company over the, this last uh, 20 minutes or so. And uh, I thank you again and uh, look forward to uh, seeing you on the next segment of Ask Oki. Thank you and goodbye.